What's up, young people? Welcome back to our BC Boom Youth Channel. Over the last couple of weeks, we have been discussing the topic temptation and how it can affect your future. This week, we're going to help you think through making decisions in terms of what's best for your future and what God says is true. When it comes to temptation, we often find ourselves wondering, what can I get away with? Or if I get caught, what will be the least severe consequences? Knowing you can get away with something with your parent or your guardian makes it a whole lot easier to do, doesn't it? And it's no different when it comes to God. Think about it. In this series, we're talking about temptation, which is basically just a desire to do something we know we shouldn't. When we face temptation, it feels like our brains are competing about the things that God says about us. Our brains wrestle with knowing that God will be disappointed if we give in to the temptation. But we also know that God would also give us grace as well. Which leaves us with another question. Will we give in to temptation? How does God respond? Stay tuned and pay attention as our ministry partner breaks this very question down for us on today. Have you ever been confident that you can get away with something? For example, you were sure your teacher wouldn't notice that you were listening to music in class because you had your AirPods in. Or you were sure your parents wouldn't find out that you went to that party because you said you were staying at a friend's house. You were sure your friend wouldn't find out you were DMing his girlfriend because she would never tell him. So growing up, I knew that if I broke curfew, I could get away with it. It may not work that way at your house, but for some reason, it worked at mine. If I came home late and I had a good enough reason or a story to back it up, you know, why that happened, they would let me off the hook. It's not that my parents weren't upset, it's just that it didn't seem to be that big of a deal to them. There were a bunch of things I couldn't get away with, but curfew wasn't one of them. And because I knew I could get away with it, do you think I broke curfew often? Of course I did. So you may have some things that you know you can get away with as well. And, and maybe it's different than what your friends can pull off, but we all know where there seems to be more wiggle room to mess up. And when we know we can get away with it, it makes it a whole lot easier to do it, doesn't it? Isn't it true? We know which teacher curves the test so we don't have to study as hard. I mean, we also know which coach is chill so we can relax and practice. We know which principal is known for his harsh punishment so we just straighten up and then, you know, whenever they're around. We're always trying to figure out what we can get away with. We want to know where the line is and how much we can do to still be okay. It is no difference when it comes to God. In this series, we're talking about temptation, which is basically a desire to do something that we shouldn't. Sometimes we're tempted by things that we know are bad, unhealthy, or wrong, yet we're so tempted that we wonder, am I out of my mind? When we face this type of temptations, it feels like our brains tells us competing things about God. You know, one side of our brain tells us that if we give in to temptation, God is going to be mad. I mean, like grabbing lightning bolts and just waiting for us to mess up so he can throw one at us. We see him as a God who cares about rules over everything. So if we mess up, we're, he's ready to punish us. The other side of our brain tells us that if we give in to temptation, God will show us grace. He's saying, I've got you, it's so good. You don't need to worry about consequence or punishment because God has it covered. That leaves us with one real question. When we give in to temptation, how does God respond? Now let's talk about it. 
we're going to look at the time when Jesus himself was tempted. <laughs> yes, Jesus, who lived the perfect life, was actually tempted to do things that he shouldn't, just like you and me. In fact, one of his best friends named Matthew wrote it down. It's recorded in what we call the Gospel of Matthew and the New Testament part of the Bible. In Matthew's account, we get some interesting details. First, he tells us that Jesus is in the wilderness where the devil, his number one enemy, is tempting him to make bad decisions. Now, I know that the devil brings, brings up a lot of sorts of images for us, but in the context of this story, Matthew is referring to the devil as the source of Jesus' temptation. Jesus is up against an enemy that is trying to take him down. And I think that we can all relate on how Jesus felt, right? First, Jesus was tempted to turn rocks into bread. I mean, he hadn't eaten in a while, so he was hungry. And the devil tempted him by saying, make food appear so that you can eat it. Now, Jesus basically said, nope, I'm not going against what God says is best for me just because my stomach is growling. God provides everything I need, so I don't need to take matters into my own hands. Then Jesus was tempted again. Now check it out. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Now Jesus answered, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. So basically the devil says, jump Jesus, God's got you, right? And Jesus responds by saying, I am not trying to play games with God. If Jesus would have jumped, we have no idea what would have happened in response. But what we know is that he didn't jump. He didn't test God, then wait for the consequences. He did what he knew was right and stared there where he was. Years later, a guy named Paul wrote about temptation. Now, Paul encountered Jesus and it changed the rest of his life. He started most of the first Christian churches and he wrote letters to them, encouraged them to live differently because of Jesus. One of those letters was to Jesus followers in the place called Galatia. Paul wrote this, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Paul says it a little differently than Jesus, but they're basically saying the same thing. Jesus said, do not put God to the test. And Paul says, God cannot be mocked. Now, either way, it's the idea that we treat God like he is supposed to do whatever we think he should do. If we give in to temptation and do whatever we want, we think that God is supposed to bail us out. I mean, after all, that's what grace is for, right? Now, don't get me wrong. God does forgive all of our sins and his grace is absolutely amazing. But that doesn't mean that there are no consequences or outcomes. Now look at what Paul said next. A man reaps what he sows. These are agricultural terms. Basically, you get out of the ground what you plant in it. But in this instance, Paul is referring to our actions and decisions. They have natural outcomes and there's no way around it. Now, it doesn't mean that God is mad or he loves you less or his grace doesn't apply to you. If you play football with your sister in the living room and you break a vase, now, even if your parents forgive you, the vase is still broken. There's still a consequence. Now, based on this, you and I need to be wise about what we sow. We need to pay attention to our decisions because we recognize that the consequences are a real part of our world. That's why Jesus didn't give in to temptation and test God. That's why Paul said, God cannot be mocked. So here's the deal. Knowing what's best in moments of temptation is not about whether or not God will punish us or bail us out. No, it's about understanding that consequences are real results of choices that we make. If we want better outcomes when we face temptation, then what we sow is very important. So think of it this way. What I do now affects who I am later. If there's one thing we can absolutely be confident in is that God loves you. 
And not just a little bit, he loves you more than you could ever know. You are his child, you're his creation. He wants you to have a great now and a great later. He's not setting you up to have a dull, boring life. He wants you to discover more life than you could ever imagine. So when he tells us things like this, it is better to love than to hate. It is better to serve than to be served. It is better to forgive than to hold grudges. It is better to take care of your body than to impair it. It is better to honor people's bodies than to objectify them. He is trying to set us up for something better. He is looking out for us, both now and in our future. We can trust that he wants what's best for us. So what can we do right now to sow better when it comes to our decisions? Here are a few places to start. First, think about your current choices. Think about the temptations you face the most. Where are you most prone to find yourself out of your mind and given in? Second, evaluate the direction of your decisions. I mean, ask yourself, what will happen if I keep sewing the way you are sewing now? What would your life look like in five years, 10 years, 20 years? What would you reap? What will be the results if you keep making current decisions in the days and years to come? Is there anything you're doing now that you know will not lead you in the direction that God wants your life to go? And third, reach out. Sometimes it's a struggle for us to figure out where we're sowing in the wrong place. That's part of the reason why you have small group leaders. Ask them or another trusted adult to help you evaluate your current decisions and where they're taking you. Talk about it, ask for help or accountability to start facing temptations in a different way. You may understand the truth of what we're talking about today because you're in the middle of a consequence for a decision you made. Maybe you've sown a lot of unpleasant seeds. I want you to know that you are not done. It is not too late to start sowing good seeds. You can start making a difference in your future by the decisions that you make today. What you do now affects who you are later, and it's never too late to walk in a different direction. Facing temptation is a lifelong process that requires plenty of grace. God loves us and forgives us. We choose to follow him because he forgives us and approves of us. We don't follow him to gain his approval. He already approved us by sending Jesus to die for us on the cross because we could never be good enough to save ourselves. If we could do it all perfectly, we wouldn't need Jesus, but we do. Because God loves us. He wants us to experience a full, thriving life with fewer regrets and consequences. He wants us to experience the best life possible. Just imagine what our life will be like if we chose to trust God with our decisions. What if He really did lead us to the best life possible? What you do now affects who you are later, and your group is a great place to keep talking about it. Are you making decisions today that will lead you to the life you want in the future? I promise you, God has your very best interest in mind. He loves you too much for you to miss this. Hey, welcome back everyone. I hope that the word shared with you today by our ministry partner has helped to open up your understanding of how we can better overcome temptation. When the devil tempted Jesus, he used the word to help him to make the right decisions. And we can do the same thing. When we are tempted, just remember to use the word. You don't have to know the scriptures word for word, but let me tell you there are a few ways that you can start. First, think about your current choices. Then, evaluate the direction of your decisions. And next, reach out. If you feel like you cannot make the right decision, 
reach out to someone who can talk you through that process. Remember, God loves you and he wants us to live a life that is thriving and full of life with fewer regrets and less consequences. Just imagine what our lives could be like if we chose to trust God with the decisions that we make. You can start making a difference in your future today with the decisions that you make today. What you do now affects who you are later and it's never too late to start walking in a different direction. All right, guys, let's pray. Lord, we come before you in prayer. We just want to say thank you. We thank you for the words of wisdom that have been shared on today through our ministry partner, God. We thank you for just knowing that we are who you say we are through your word. And we ask that you help us, God, that when we're tempted, that we remember to look to you and involve you in the decisions that we make so that we're able to make better decisions that will help us with our future, oh God. We ask that you bless us to remember to utilize your word, to walk into your word, and to seek help when we're not able to make the right decisions, God. And Lord, we ask that you bless every heart, mind, and soul that is listening to this message on today, that you will reach deep down into their inner soul to help them recognize who they are through your word, God. And we ever mindful to give your name glory and honor and praise for you're worthy of all things. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, just a reminder before you go, make sure that you're following along with this West lesson during the week, utilizing our YouVersion Bible app. Also, please make sure to keep up what's going on with our BC Youth Ministry by following us on Instagram under BC underscore boom. Thanks, everyone, and have a great week. Bye.